uh, whatever we have right now and what we are planning. And it's uh, more of a talk, more than a talk, what I want to do is discuss is about the things which we can improve right now. And so I'll show you a few things which we are actually not doing not that good in the top things. So I think it's that so this is like who am I? Uh, I'm Kushal, Fedora Ambassador. I'm a member of the PSS. Uh, I love Fedora. That's the beginning and end of everything I do for Fedora. So about this project. So what is dark server? So that's the most common question, I guess. Uh, so as I said, it's a, in one line, it's a server for GNU build ID. So throughout the talk, we'll see what is a GNU build ID. Uh, why we have all the stuff. Um, it's in production. It, Dark Server was a Fedora 17 feature. So it's running at darkserver.fedoraproject.org. Uh, it's a production instance. Uh, we started uh, the taking input from the Koji, um, I think Fedora 16 time. So we have all information starting from Fedora 16 onwards. So right now we are supporting only the primary architectures. Uh, but before we go into the details, we have to see why we're doing this. So the backstory started long back in, during Fedora 8, when there was a new feature that was introduced in GCC, uh, which is the GNU build ID. So the idea is that every time you build a new applica application or new binary, anything using GCC, each of the binaries will get a unique ID. So this ID will be embedded in any code dump which is caused by this binary or where it is a part of it. So you can think about a big application when it is crashing and it has like 20 library dependency. So all the libraries, the build ID will be embedded into this code dump. Uh, so just for example, how it looks, we'll have a try. There is a command called u unscript which can throw the build ID for us. So we will uh, send your favorite command, any of the binary commands. Uh, other than ls maybe. Less. Yeah, maybe same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, as you can see, this is the thing we are uh, mostly talking about. What's the first one? Huh? Uh, that's the uh, address. Okay, so you see, uh, there is an address address symbol here. So this selected part is actually the unique build ID for this particular VM, uh, VIM command or the VIM ELS file. ELS file. Uh, the, after the address, that's also the starting address, if you remember, and that's the path of the binary. So the thing is that, that uh, obviously, the tools team, people who write these uh, tools like uh, GCC and stuff, and while we are having the simple chat with them, they said that uh, they are pretty good in doing this stuff, but obviously they were lacking a service or system where they can actually store this information and use it in future or in other tools. What are the other tools? Uh, the primary tool will be obviously GDB because we use GDB to debug any like, crashes or any of our applications. So what they actually want is to recreate the whole environment. And to recreate the environment, you should know exactly which all libraries were present at the time of crash and which person, and they should match exact data. So to have that exact matching, we can use this particular uh, IDs here. And just go for a few seconds. Uh, we'll just see some small demo. Uh, here we go. Yeah. So uh, this is a instance production instance. This is the production instance, uh, dark server.fedora project.org. 
the API is still now gives only around four calls, uh, four calls only. So server version, the build ID details, and uh, details of an RPM or download link, uh, we'll see. So you can copy this, your. So here we go. So basically returns a JSON. It basically returns a JSON uh, output feedback, uh, which shows uh, the distribution, the build ID, the YLF file, and which RPM it was part of. So giving you a direct idea like where this is coming and for the debugging, what people actually need the dot debug files. Maybe not the exact binary. And yeah, I can copy the. So the. Another API call which is available is uh, the opposite way. When you know the RPM name, you want to get all the build IDs and which are the binaries inside the package. So that's true. Uh, the third one, which, will, which is a big pain right now uh, in this application, which we, we have to improve somehow, is actually because they also need an option to download the RPM. Uh, here comes the big problem. See, we know uh, our lifecycle allows us only two releases to be up there in the Fedora mirror. And that, uh, that is also when there is a new release comes of a package, the older releases are getting deleted from the mirrors. So there is no easy way for them to actually find that direct download link to which they can download an RPM. Let's say of older release, maybe if 17, maybe if 16 right now. Because the crash can happen anywhere and they don't know exactly and how to find out those uh, download mirrors. So, so from our uh, Fedora release engineering team, we find out the so Koji provides an API call. Right now, directly using that API call. So if I copy the and the package thing. So you can see how much time is actually taking. These Koji calls are very, very uh, expensive from the time and I think from the, uh, because it has to do a lot of calculations, it actually makes two or three different calls to find out the exact uh, Koji build ID and then find the download link and then returns an URL to download the exact RPM. So, but this should, this is one of, this is why we have started writing the tool so that GDB and like other tools can actually get this download link and download it fast. It shouldn't be like this is one of the major drawback right now when you are start. Um, before discussing those things, maybe uh, Kodi doesn't store uh, existing builds. No, but uh, the. Uh, the idea was like the builds which are already ran, like uh, which are out there, so those builds are getting stored. So if it is uh, there, I mean, what do you call it? If it's pushed, so those builds are still there in Koji. So you can download those builds, not maybe every, uh, say, every build. Yeah, but so the problem of adding a reproducing an F16 environment is still there. Because we don't have the RPM anymore. No. Also not, not all the RPM, but yes, we can still download the exact RPM, maybe. So Docker ever stores the RPM? No. Koji does. Yeah, really. All the versions of all the RPM still? Every, every RPM we've ever released. The only ones that don't are the ones we need to build that are in lock. And also, and also the things like uh, what do you call it? cash bills, they don't store it. So, okay. so, so signed, which 
that is the time point in the story. So in the first iteration of the tool, what we had as the idea is the tool will be separated into different parts. One part is the importer, which will keep importing data automatically from Koji. The second part is just a web server, which will give us that uh, simple JSON output. So in the first time, what I did was uh, we were discussing how to do this and the API Koji provides. So uh, Digri Mo, he pointed me like you should have a Koji pl plugin that line he suggested. And I would try to start writing one. And we had a Koji plugin. Uh, we had because it introduced two major problems. The first problem was the idea of the whole process of actually downloading the RPM, extract the RPM on the somewhere, go through each of the, uh, identify the binary files out of it, process them, get the uh, PLF ID, build, uh, you know, build ID, push it back to database. It's kind of long process. And the Koji hubs were not that good to handle all of this. So I think first time the kernel developer started shouting for the issue. And then I think are any other big uh, binary packages like KDE Leaps, they also started seeing the build was done in one hour, next one another or 40 minutes. And next one hour, actually this tool was downloading and processing. So the build was never finished for two hours, which was pretty bad. Like, if I'm a packager, I'm really angry. I think somebody is just increasing time by almost double the stuff. So in the next version or next release, uh, while we're doing, we did an async import. So right now, Dark Server instance, the production instance, uh, runs its own importers, uh, which uh, which is again completely written using Python. Um, so we keep monitoring for in any new builds in Koji. Whenever there is a new build, we put a job into our job queue. Uh, there are separate workers which just fetch the from the queues, it fetches the RPMs and downloads the RPMs, goes to parse, parsing. Uh, parsing was another issue because uh, at the beginning, just for uh, having things in simple way, we have to use uh, that u and the hyphen un unstrip command and extract the data. But obviously, that was not scaling properly because we have to create new process every time and then and think about the packages like kernel where you have so many uh, binary files. So I, uh, I I wrote a Python module with the help of the ELF Eagles library, so which is a Python. Uh, I mean, it's a Python module. So from the Python, you can directly get the string, and which is way way faster than the u unstrip command to get the information. So this is now doing the work for us. It's importing almost later. The, so the the async import. Did you actually put a Koji plugin that calls the server no, saying no, that nothing. It's it, not, it, it, no, it's completely detached from Koji. Mm -hmm. The only way it works is that it periodically checks for new builds in Koji. Did you, did you think about using a Fedma plugin now that it's in place? Um, we, that, the time we started this, Fed message was not there. Yeah. So maybe in future we can have it. That can be very easy. Like, the whole infrastructure is ready, correct, to use for kind of option. So this is actually the uh, list of the features which we had, uh, basically REST API, and then uh, JSON output because it's easier for people to parse. Uh, we can search by build ID, RPM, and we can also get a download URL for the RPMs. This is the world around the dark server project. Uh, there are tools like JDB parse, which can tap, which can actually get benefit out of it. So this tool or the service is mostly for other developers who write tools for developers, it's not for everyone. But uh, in total, the idea is to help developers to debug first, to create uh, or solve the problems in a pretty fast way. Have you had feedback from them? Yes. Uh, so I'll come to the feedback point. So while developing the tool, uh, I was continuously in touch with the primary tools team who we work with the GDB maintainers. So they get uh, the most valuable feedback on how to go ahead in doing the stuff. So, uh, OK, so these are the work in progress ideas. So now we, uh, I'm lucky enough to have a GSOC student this year from the federal group. So that he's working on the ideas uh, and mentoring him. So the primary thing came up is the multi-arc. So that uh, other than the primary architecture, we want to have ARM and any other architecture which we support in Fedora as the secondary architecture. We want to import everything. Um, 
So we're working on a better dashboard so that it will be easier for the person uh, who is now mostly me uh, monitoring the service as a whole that things uh, about the status of the workers and details. Right now I have a command line dashboard which works okay kind but not that great. Uh, caching is another thing we are targeting because as I was saying, you saw the how much time it took to give me a download URL thing. So uh, one of the ideas which I had was like, let's pre-cache all the download URLs from Cortex because that will be much simpler and we can directly fetch it from memory on or uh, even, even if it is from disk, it will be way, way faster than waiting for like five or 10 seconds for a web call. So we are, I want to hear some suggestions on how I should do that or what are the options you think would be a good idea? Uh, one of the reasons is that when a system, something crashes in, let's say, for Fedora land, that crash will be repeated many times in many other people. So most probably, many, many developers or many people will try to get the details or download link for the same RPM again and again. So uh, caching will be very like proper solution uh, that kind of scenario. So uh, as I said, it's for the other developers to help. So and people may not like to code to uh, and these people are pretty good with Bash and they want everything in the command line, but they don't want to make those web calls to from the Bash and they want to do something. So they wanted also wanted our small client side library tool, uh, Dart client. Uh, it's a command line tool. Uh, the output is pretty uh, nice so that anyone can uh, parse the output in Bash. Um, so you, you can install it, just you install the app client. I'll just have a small demo. Okay. Okay. So, here another command. I'm not sure if you did just change the, the black and white on the animal inverse. The, the oh, the profile set? Yeah, the console profile set. Just go to preferences. Uh, hmm? Two? Yeah, and the uh, black on white. That might render better on the. Yeah, it's better on the. Looks good. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> huh? They're all kind of crappy. Not yeah. the same on this camera. But whatever. It works. Uh, but anyway, I can see. So. So that line has an I. Um, you can provide a list of LFIDs you want to get the details for. So uh, this gives a space, a separated uh, list of the details. So things like uh, the group ID, the RPM, and the file names. So you get the debugging for everything in the same time. So it will be much easier to parse for anyone in any language, and then. Um, just as the things go on, my system crash. Okay. Can anyone help me? From here, it looks fine. No. <laughs> Not the mouse, all tab, nothing. There are rocks. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> oh, goes the other option. Oh, yeah. It looks weird. <laughs> yeah. Use kernel pen. Panic of the kernel. No, well, it's gone crazy. Virus. <laughs> Wicker's fault. It's virus. <laughs> <laughs> so should I just restart? Restart. Yeah. yeah. What have you done? I've never no, no, seen no, this no. Oh, did you do it? <laughs> you must have something wrong with that system. <laughs> it's clearly a hardware failure. Google. Uh, I'm sure that you dropping off loud now. Rex, and not that. Oh, yeah, you have someone watching you, right? So then I. Hi, Rex. <laughs> Rex, I'm here. Oh. Yeah, you can put on the camera and do a small dance in the meanwhile. Hi, Rex! <laughs> Maybe the technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah oui, tout à fait, oui, tout à fait, Lex. Si, c'est technique, il y a un YouTube. We'll just take the video, cut this part out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now Rex has left. <laughs> I'm kidding. It would be funnier if some more people from his university show up suddenly. <laughs> Walk by or the filter. What the hell we have filter system? Suddenly it's not in UK anymore. <laughs> Oh, it's DRM, I look like many other movies. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you're back. Yay! Uh, oh. So, anyway, more than the dust line, the one is. The build ID. The build ID, so I didn't want to tell you. Did it make it street? No, it would have crashed without the history. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. The lack of reaction of Rex to your, to your dance makes me think that he's only partly watching. <laughs> That's what we do. by um, one of the developers from uh, uh, Valve developers, I guess. He works in Valve. Uh, Valve. Um, so he was uh, looking into the different ways of handling, uh, finding out these build IDs or symbol IDs in uh, different distributions across Windows and Linux. So, uh, so he talked about the Fedora. Uh, at the beginning, his uh, impression was not that good because uh, as I showed, the 4G import plugin it failed, and we never had enough information. But uh, as while he, he wrote the first uh, part of this blog post, uh, we actually updated the system, and within one day we got the whole new data back, and uh, we started giving him exact calculations. So, so we talked about here like uh, how he used the tool and. the stuff and so basically I mean, how it enables him easily to find uh, the dark server details, uh, so the build ID is from dark server. But as we, as I said, like we still need to improve a lot of stuff, like obviously one of the major thing is that uh, different architectures, then different distributions, uh, the easiest thing will be go for the RPM based distributions like something like maybe centOS and then to have uh, and I think we already have the build-id.org domain. That was long time back book by one of the developers. So we can use that as a way to have maybe later on separated out to complete one single place to have all the other distributions data. And, and at least for now, the, another major issue is of the caching of the download URLs. 
really want to do that in Dhamma 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 Dhamma
uh, yeah, I, I, we had a chat with them regularly when I started the tool and the things, but the goals were completely different. And the other thing is that ADIT best depends on the young people. So the thing is that they, even they cannot provide anything old stuff which is already gone from the mirror. So, so that was one of the issues. And well, what I was thinking of is one of the problems the ADRT can run into is when they have something that isn't in the mirror and they don't know how to get to it. Yes. So going and having a dark client oh. say, oh, this is this bill. I can look it up and find it. Yeah, so um, I mean, that's, the, that's what the reason why we had that call. So there is another talk going on right now that they are saying that making two web calls to get the download URLs is uh, maybe bad, uh, so so they want to maybe have the download here in the same single call. What did you say? Rex says Robo Smooth. <laughs> that was hot. You're on. <laughs> Oh. Hmm. Goodbye. You're, you're the friend. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it on the page. On to our... Yay! <laughs> Yeah, so lucky to see you again. <laughs> Put it on off hmm? Put it on off huh? This is on air, correct? Yeah, this is online. Yeah, so make it off air. No, it's online. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. So.